hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So again, last week we talked about the uh, six, seal, six of the seals, and we also mentioned the seventh seal, seal we started on it, which the seals, for those who don't remember, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, the first one was, uh, man, was given a bow, given a crown, and went out to conquer. The second seal, peace was removed, violence breaks out, and that person has a sword and a red horse. The first horse was a white horse. Oh, sorry. Oh, my thing's freaking out. There you go. Uh, the, the third seal was uh, given scales and uh, implies that there will be a lot of inflation. Again, the inflation it's talking about is like 12 times, 10 to 12 times what the price of things were, are running for at that time. Um, the fourth seal is death and, and Hades with him. I was thinking, yeah, again, like I said, in the movies, that's like one of the most quoted parts of it is, you know, I am the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. I'm death, you know. The vigilante always has that kind of saying. Um, a fourth of the earth will be killed with sword, famine, and death to the beasts. Uh, the fifth seal, it kind of switches up a little bit. The martyrs cry out from under the altar and say, you know, asking God, when will we be revenged? And uh, he says, when the, time, when the number has been reached. Then we get to the sixth seal. <laughs> Why is this freaking out? There you go. The earth quakes, the sun darkens, the moon turns, and stars fall from the sky. And the sky recedes like a scroll. And people are hidden and trying to you know, get away from God. They're like, hide us under the rocks. And then we start with uh, seven, which was the seventh seal, which is, starts with Revelation 8. Heaven was silent for a half hour. Dun, 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 which is kind of where we were, or we are. So this week is obviously a little more exciting than last week's. It's like <laughs> we get a little more into the uh, kind of imagery of things. Um, so we'll get going with that. Dun, dun, dun. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Revelations 8.1. Not much to elaborate, I feel, on that. Silence is silence. There's kind of interesting, you know, after this, kind of almost like the, the pause before the storm, because kind of like up to that, you know, obviously everything kind of happened, and then there's kind of a little pause, and you're like, oh, finally it's over, and like, no, it's just more is beginning. So it's like kind of like that little pause. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dun-da-da, horns, yay. Because one thing going into Relish is I feel we always focus kind of more on the seals, and we don't realize that there are different layers to it too because like I said now we've got the horns and then later we'll have the bowls and so there's many different layers to it. So Revelation 8.2 again we're using uh, New King James just to make it a little easier. And I saw seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. This is kind of interesting. So this... Yeah. I have a comment. Yeah. <laughs> Just on that. This is something that God showed me a while back when I was reading Revelation about. It says, where is it? Offer prayers with the prayers of all the saints. I think we've talked about this in preaching teach. Like this to me, the Lord revealed to me is like there's no prayer that isn't heard by heaven, that God doesn't yeah. hear or receive. And this is like even when things like we pray for people and they don't repent, or you know what I mean, like whatever the situation may be, it doesn't just go away. Like it's never wasted with God. And this yeah. is like where they're gathered in a sense, and He uses the prayers of the saints as a okay, you didn't want to repent, Here, here's the judgment for that, or whatever it may be. So yes. I'm not saying I know it all, but uh, that's something that God definitely showed me, was our prayers are never not heard. Our prayers are never not stored in his heart. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's many instances in the scriptures where it talks about, you know, some, for some reason something was delayed or yeah. that. And again, sometimes it's, we're not praying the right thing. Sometimes it's not in the right thing. But again, none of our prayers are wasted. Right. Yeah. Amen. Done. Nothing else that also builds that relationship with God, which is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be having that relationship, which you have by actually talking with people and 
so you get that again from talking to God. Mm -hmm. One of the ways to do that is through prayer. Okay. So the interesting thing for me on this was just there's kind of then randomly seven angels that stand before God, which I mean, technically all angels that get stand before God, but there's not in the previous explanations of the court or not the, or the uh, rooms, it, it, the throne room, it doesn't specify that there were seven angels in front of him, but now there are seven angels in front of him. So that's just a little something that was kind of like, hmm, interesting. Uh, to me, do, 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 offers a throne and smoke. Yeah, so he mixes it and it's a sweet smell and aroma to God at the angel's hand. And then it gets a little more exciting with verse 3. Or, what? I skipped to 5. What happened? 3, 5. Oh, no, three, five. Okay, that's always say 4. There you go. And 5. Uh, and the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thundering, lightning, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So again, in preparation for the angels to blow their horns, the prayers are offered up. Then the angel scoops the ashes or the coals out of the altar and throws them at earth. <laughs> so again, comets. There's going to be a lot of comets and fire from heaven in the end. <laughs> That's what I get from so far as so far as this. Uh, the first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. Yeah, and this isn't from the, this is, seems like it's different fire from heaven other than the incense, which was right before this. Yeah. Blood of the, under the altar. No one knows, or at the moment. Uh, the second angel sounded something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Noticing a theme here, a third of every, pretty much everything is getting destroyed in the earth. Uh, da, 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 da. A mountain burning with fire, thrown to the sea. Typically, I think of a volcano. But it, some mountains do blow their tops when they erupt. But again, a whole mountain. <laughs> you never know. All right. Then a third, third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. And the third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died in the waters because it was made bitter. If you remember back at the beginning of Revelation 2, it was talking about uh, the one church that was bitter, that was kind of not hot or cold, and we spit out. Um, there's also, there's other parts in, I think it was Isaiah, where it mentions about bitter waters and how bitter waters aren't really good for anything. If you want to add to that. Uh, well, I was just going to say that, too, uh, wormwood is an, actual, um, is an actual herb, which has a bitter flavor and in large quantities is poisonous. So it's, uh, I think it's just the idea that the water not only tastes bad, but it'll kill you, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this made me think too of is it Genesis or Exodus where Moses, um, the water's bitter, right? When they're out in the wilderness and the water's bitter, and he makes, what is it, the, the, the wood that touches the water, or I'm totally butchering right now. Bob, do you know what I'm talking about? The water's bitter and they're complaining, and Moses, um, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll they purify. Yeah, he has what God tells him what to do to purify. Yeah, and it's like, and he touches the water, and it's resembling. It's the cross. That specific wood. It's resembling the cross, right? Like the blood is. So I'll find the scripture. Sorry, yeah. but. We'll talk more. But again, so a third. Sorry. Right. No. <laughs> a third of the rivers again, or another third of the earth is unusable, basically. They go into the fourth angel. And a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them was darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. 
And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the remaining blast of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. So then you get a third more darkness, or actually almost more than that, because <laughs> technically you get a third of the day is gone and a third of the night is all dark. So that makes it even dark. So no stars, no. Pitch black. Crop stuff growing. Yeah. Yep. yep. Stops crops growing. Stops a lot of things. Mine, don't get it. Yeah. Definitely don't get enough vitamin D then, you know. Not a good, not a good time. Well, it's losing half of a third of the water, a third of the green, third of Water. And then he says, hey, it's going to get worse. Yeah. And then, hey, there's three more. It's still coming. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it's the like, zombie chapter. Yeah, yeah. Three hey. the chapter nine. <laughs> Everyone's like, <"That's> <laughs> This is more exciting. Yeah. Now, the fifth angel sat and I saw a star fall from heaven. Again, another star falling from heaven uh, <laughs> to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Which again, for me, that kind of remind, brings back memories of like, you know, like paradise. You know, when paradise burned, it blackened the whole sky. And so it... But up to that point, it's kind of like, oh, it got dark, you know, type of thing. It's like, but after experiencing that, it's like, that kind of makes it much more ominous and much more kind of terrifying in that regard. Yeah. And so, and so it just, especially like kind of, it was just, yeah, it's really weird thinking of it like that, you know, like a volcano or something like that. When it actually erupts, it does blacken out the whole sky. Uh, the bottomless pit, this obviously comes up later. Uh, and so this is kind of when they open it up obviously, because that's what it says, to give them the keys to open the bottomless pit in preparation, or if, you read ahead, if you've read ahead, you know what happens. But that's like, <laughs> when we get to there. Uh, da, 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 da. Then out of the smoke, locusts came on the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, nor any green thing or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So this is interesting in many ways because locusts typically eat all the green stuff. That's usually what they do. They come through and they wipe out crops. They wipe out everything green. And in this, they're, do, they're not touching the green stuff at all. They're only going after men, you know, and women. So we'll be equal, equal opportunists here. It's, like, it's, like, it's specifying humans, humans. <laughs> what do you think the seal of God on their foreheads would be? Because I heard, like... We talked about that a little the bit last week. Beast on their we talked about that a little bit last week, and there's much, much, much debate on what the seal is, what the mark of the beast is. We will touch on that a little bit more too later as we get into it. Um, we already go through the 144,000. Yes, yes, yeah, that was uh, last time. I think. Really? Yeah, last time I talked about the 144. Of uh, those were the tribes of. Um, Israel, verse 12. Yep, oh, yep, 12, 12, 12 of each. And so at this point, those are the only people that it mentions are actually have the mark or seal at that point. Up to this point is all that is mentioned as the seal of Christ on them. Because remember, yeah, because they paused it's after. The seven year. Yeah, because it, it will, we haven't got to that far yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> JK. So, so far we got to, previously we were talking about uh, the, we opened up the different seals. I think it was after the fifth seal, right before the sixth seal. God said, whoa, hold up. Uh, came through and said, hold up. Let me, let's mark the 144,000, which is 12,000 from each tribe of Israel. So he came and put a mark on them. What that looks like, we don't know. We talked about it a little bit last time how different people have different ideas of what you know a mark is or like as far as like the mark of the beast or... Um, some people, I said, believe it's not worship, it's worship, having a church on Sunday is actually the mark of the beast because you're not celebrating on the Sabbath. And so there's different people who have many different things. You got uh, chips, there's all sorts of different things on it. Um, vaccines, we've talked about many different, we talked about it a little bit last time, and we will talk about more when we get to the mark of the beast. But yeah, as far as what the mark is, nobody really knows. Is it two separate marks though? That's a mark you're getting... Yeah, correct. Yeah, this, yeah, this, this one would be the mark from because we haven't got to the mark of the beast at all. Yeah. Yet. We haven't touched on that as much. That's later on. Uh, so far, the only mark that we know of is the mark on the 144,000, which are from the 12 tribes of Israel. 
twelve thousand from each tribe. That's where the what's the religion that goes with that? There, uh, there are some denominations, yeah, that do believe that there's a certain number of people who like in heaven. It gets all complicated. Yeah, we we'll talk about it a little bit on Mondays, but um, I don't want to get too too much in the weeds on that. It's a long rabbit trail. Uh, so yeah. So then it gives us uh, more information on these locusts, which again are not destroying all the greenery like locusts typically do. They're actually just attacking people. And they're given authority to kill them, but not, not, given not to kill them. We're not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. It's like, yay! That's like, oh, wow. <laughs> you don't get to die, you just get to hurt a lot. And a torment is like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. I personally have not been stung by a scorpion. Has anybody, Sarah, has No, been? I have not been stung by a scorpion. <laughs> that was not my hand. No. I just have told a little story. I was reading Revelation, and this, I was just me and God just hanging out, and I was reading through it, and I read this, and I personally have this thing with zombies. Like, they're not real, I know, but the idea of something that you can't kill, you know? And so I'm reading this, and I was like, I stopped, and I was like, wait, God, what? I'm all, that sounds like a zombie. <laughs> And he's like, what does evil like? Or, I'm sorry, what does misery like? Company. And so when someone is suffering this much, do you think they're going to walk around happy with a good countenance, or are they going to try to make other people miserable too? Which is pretty much what zombies do, right? So again, not a doctrine, <laughs> just saying that pretty much sounds like a zombie. So not they're going to be rotting away. Whether you're a zombie or not, you're definitely going to be hurting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never been stung by a scorpion to know how that feels. Yeah, I've been poked painful. by many sharp things and something that leave resid that stings. I imagine it's worse they than think that. of a wasp bite. Like, that's yeah, the yeah. I can yeah, yeah. it too. But like, all of this is after the rapture. Yeah. Yeah. We're not here for this. If you're not yes. rapture. Yeah. Yes, this piece is still peace is not for us. <laughs> Jake. Not to get too far off the uh, trail. Not to get too Back in the third verse of, I think, the prior chapter of this chapter, it said, uh, not, uh, something like a great mountain on fire <coughs> going to the sea mm -hmm. just out of heaven. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a meteor, right? Yeah, uh, it may do it. But definitely um, in the season of meteors in there, too. They're talking about lots of them. Yeah. Meteors. And then I do have a question. In the Revelation, it says, and then this, and then this. Mm -hmm. Is this all in a linear fashion? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we is, that, is that clarified? We had that debate uh, last Monday. Or Monday last time right? we had it like Monday meeting. Probably. And... That's again where there's much scholarly discussion on what is, you know, in order, what isn't in order, especially as we get past the seven trumpets and the seven bowls, because that seems like it's the end, but then there's still, you know, 12 more chapters to go. So it's like, that's where a lot of the eschatology yeah, debate does come in as far as what does this all happen in order. The seals and stuff and the trumpets kind of sound like, to me, like they would happen in order of the section, um, just because... They list them in order. But again, too, the other thing to remember is these aren't necessarily always literal either. Yeah. Some of them are imagery or imply things. Um, because he also said um, the number of 200 million men or something. Like that. Yeah, related to the next part we get to. Yes, I don't think but, Well, 200 million is the horsemen that are sent out to kill everybody. Yeah. 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 When they open their Well, I heard your little comment there, Preston, about helicopters and military oh, yeah. and yeah. It's true, though. You have to think. He was seeing a vision. He didn't know what a helicopter was. He yeah. didn't know what military tanks were. He didn't know. So he says bird. It could have been a helicopter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Oops. he was seeing the world we're living in. So yeah, 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 he's he can't thinking. explain all of it, you know? So. Yeah. Like I said last week, he's also where their original first uh, flat earthers. So, you know, the earth isn't all that as big as we, we know it as. But so, uh, but yeah, they don't have the same context as we do. Yeah. We were talking, uh, David and I were talking about this last Monday about how cool it would be to be actually still in the first kind of century um, and be able to see it from their eyes. Because yeah. you know, we have our eyes, our position, where it's like some of the stuff doesn't make as much sense to us, whereas that during that time it might have made more sense because it's much more in context with you know, the time. Which is where the whole hermeneutics and stuff comes yeah. into studying scriptures. Right.
Something that would re regularly kill you kind of is going to kill you. Like, so. Well, later he wants to say it's, it's released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Oh, <laughs> Grandma <Grimmer laughs> takes a break for a little bit. <laughs> now that's a good point, though. Like, you want yeah. to die from the rain, yeah. but then. Yeah, which sounds very unfun. Sounds yeah. very undead. Yeah, it's not undead. <laughs> 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 was just saying something about the, that movie, The Scorpion King. How like, <laughs> it, it, it makes you like a yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, now the next part goes into actually the description of what they look like, which again, whether it's literal or part of it's sim symbolic, who knows, but this is what it uh, describes it as. The shape of the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns or something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and they were stingers in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. They had as king over them an angel, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew was Abinadon. But in Greek, it has the... Oh, it came off. Oh, 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 here it is. It's down at the bottom. And then it's Abaddon and then Hebrew and then Apollyon. Apollyon, in Greek. And both of those mean destroyer. Destroyers. Yeah, destroyers. Which is kind of interesting because this is kind of the first angel in this section or uh, person. Yeah, angel. Angel from Boston. That um, has a name that's mentioned. Because otherwise, before we had the strong angel. The really buff guy, you know, was like, who wasn't able to open the seal of a player. Then you have even the uh, Son of Man and stuff like that. They don't necessarily call them, but have a name. This is like kind of the first time in Revelations, other than earlier, uh, where it mentions somebody actually by like name. Just kind of interesting. Yeah. We're just talking about maybe this is taking place in Shield. Like I googled it, mm -hmm. and it talks about um, the bottomless pit after referring to Shield, meaning the resting place of death. Yeah, a lot of which makes sense with the destroyer. And if you remember, just in the last chapter, it said that's when the bottom's pit was empty or opened. Yeah. And so then, I would assume the angel of the bottom's pit came from the bottom's pit, or you know, at least that area. And now that it's open, he's out here. Uh, and apparently, they look like locusts with scorpion tails. <laughs> it sounds like a drag queen lion. I mean, like, <laughs> it's got jack teeth and. Nice. Which I would assume is longer. It's true. Yeah. I mean, they're all. Well, oh, Jesus' time, the black guys are longer, too. So I was like, it's like past your shoulders, I guess. Yeah, I say, like, there's lots of options. I think. Yeah. But I guess it's flowy. At least it doesn't say like, women's hair in a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too close, John. Crazy too close. Yeah. Too close. Of the you didn't know how to describe them. He's like, yeah. He's all, I think I'm going to call them hipsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were the, the names. Then one woe is passed. Behold, two more woes are coming after these things. So again, not just one woe of yeah. the one of three the woes nine. coming. So then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who had the trumpet. Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. The 200 million horsemen to kill a third of mankind. That's a lot of horsemen. Yeah. I, there's already a third was killed, so there's another third. Is it that question? Is it a third of the third, or is it a third of you know the two thirds? <laughs> it's like. Because <laughs> I, <would hate> <laughs> I guess they aren't dying. They're it's short. Themselves. It's a very slow and tedious process. Yeah. Like, and, it's and, and right before this too, though, you were just being stung by scorpions yeah. and. Not dying. Yeah. 
for five like months. For five months of being stung by scorpions and wanting to die, but not being able to. Uh, I feel like sweet release at this point. I know. The last thing I've been asking for is for that point. Like, you can only really, yeah, stress so much. Um, crazy this is all actually going to happen, and we're just sitting here like, heck yeah, it's going to suck. It's crazy that they, <laughs> they made movies and all this other stuff about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hollywood's all been telling us for decades. That's what we were talking about last week, was I mentioned, you know, it's like, you know, Christ's first coming was something, you know, everyone was kind of joyous for, you know, his second coming, we're still joyous for it, but sometimes it's a little harder to be more joyous for it because, you know, all this bad stuff's going to happen. It just makes me and again, hungry to Yeah, but again, yeah, it does. It builds that desire to want to let others know, to uh, warn them, basically. Yeah, really. um, and it kind of gives you, that, say, a little bit of that fear of yeah. it, you know, that fear of God. Yeah. Fear of God. And again, with it, is no matter what you do, it doesn't. Nothing you do will ever cancel this out. This is going to happen yeah. no matter what. Is the thing too. So it's like, in some ways, that's scary and humbling. Yeah. Right. Um, similarly, with the Christ coming, uh, the first coming of Christ, was nothing anybody could do was going to stop that. Right. I mean, you know, same try, but um, yeah. this one's a little harder sometimes to look forward to. I, I feel sometimes. You have to look forward to the very end when you know we're reunited with Christ, and it makes it a little less uh, intimidating. So, my own on you know that. Anyways, yeah. So two hundred million. It's a lot of horsemen out to kill a third of mankind. Uh, and thus, I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hissian blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. But they were, but, but these three plagues, a third of man was killed. By the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which came out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. This is kind of interesting. Like we were talking about before. So these aren't your normal horses. <laughs> it's like obviously. Uh, and the people sat on them fiery red and hissy and blue and sulfur yellow. Okay. So kind of colorful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll find the beauty if you can. You got I mean, if you're gonna be the villain, you gotta have a nice, you know, costume, you know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dog box. And again, if you, if you dive into this deeper, you can get into the different colors, what different colors mean typically. Yeah. There's colorology in scriptures, the scripture. Um, you also look at most of the animal descriptions, kind of like lions typically uh, have a meaning, you know, fire has a meaning usually purification type. Fire usually is a purifying thing, uh, as well as destruction, but it's obviously destroyed by fire. Um, smoke and brimstone usually are negative connotations. <laughs> it's like <laughs> definitely death and destruction. Um, that was interesting, 19 there goes, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. The tails are like serpents having heads and with them to do harm. The, that part indicates to me almost more like it might be more of a uh, verbal type thing, like what they say causes, like our mouth is, you know, can cut, old way can cut. And so the tongue, you have to be careful what you say because it can cause damage, it can cause destruction. Whereas we usually think, you know, obviously fire and brimstone, that does, we know that causes destruction. You hit things with a hot rock, it's going to destroy something. Whereas words we typically, somebody feel underestimate the power of them or what they do. And it's important to remember that you know, your words have power. All right, so at this point, you know, a third and a third of mankind has been destroyed, plus the couple, a whole bunch of torturing, and then, um, but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent for the works of their hands, and that they should not worship demons, the idols of God, silver, brass, stone, and wood, and can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. 
So even after all this, they're like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Like, if you could picture, and I'm not going to say any names, someone evil in the world today, mm. right? We all picture somebody. So, like, from our perspective, right? Not as a judge, but just mm. this is how the, what, the fruit you're bearing, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you think of the worst, what's the worst of the worst that would hang on through that? Like, they're probably still rotting, too. They're probably still, they're just not dying. You know what I mean? So it's like, what's, that's like punishment, I guess. To not well, you think of like Pharaoh in you know, the Old Testament, we talk about you know Exodus. He had, he had his heart was hardened, and so even no matter what Moses did, he still said no. Because like you know, all these different plagues and yeah. stuff came, and he's still like, Meh, I'm still here. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, I still got a great kingdom. I, you know, in a third of it's destroyed. You know, whatever. But you no, know, I can, I can push through this. Yeah. Um, sometimes. It reminds me of recently a lot of talk, uh, kind of with AI and stuff like that, is that we're creating some, we're finally creating something in some ways that's equal to us or more powerful than us. And so for people, that makes us sometimes like gods, which us, there's some discussion on that part of the problem is that men get to the point where they think they are gods. Yeah. Which has been kind of from kind of back in Babel, even like that was more of the thing where where God separated the languages right. because it's like man can do anything, and so then they're going to see themselves possible. as gods. Because if you can recreate yourself right. or something better than yourself, then you are basically like a god, right? Because hey, I made this. And they, for, for currently, it's been confined to computers. You're stuck in a computer. Well, there's billionaires that, that sh you could read stories about that are trying to be mortal. They're yeah. like, what do I, how do yeah. I do this? What do I eat? I mean, that's where you cut the stem cell stuff comes from. I mean, all kinds of evils and things. But yeah, because I mean, people learn ma amazing things. And modern medicine, you know, so it does amazing things. And again, obviously that's part of the reason why God, during the Tower of Babel, separated the languages to make it more difficult for us to escalate to that level where we see ourselves as gods. Right. You know what's creepy? Speaking of that, yep. what you just said, something just came up. You know how they have those like Rosetta Stones and everything? Mm -hmm. I just saw one the other day, it's called Babel. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's Babel. Yeah. It's creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's Babel. it's, it's uh, like a how to learn languages. Yeah. It's called Babel. It's yeah. interesting because Babel weird. was just a few generations after the flood. Yep. Yeah. And so it's interesting to think about. And something that you brought up with Pharaoh, too, that Nicole pointed out to me years ago was it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Correct. And it's like you think of God like he's this gracious, he's this and that, but it's like Jesus said, no one takes my life, I lay it down, right? And so God dictates some, sometimes things that seem to us like laws yeah. or like, I don't know. It was, that's just an interesting thing, though. No, that's something I'm... To fulfill his plan. Nicole and I have been looking at uh, Genesis a lot more recently, kind of going through the Bible in a year, and... One of the things in Genesis, when you're looking at that, a lot of it actually talks of, isn't that, a lot of it is us yielding what we consider right and wrong, what we consider things to God, what does God say is right and wrong. Because to us, if through our own eyes, we can see, make things like, oh, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. But what does God say? And so in many ways, it's us yielding to him to see what he says is right and wrong. Uh, Despite what our better, what our judgment right. says, what right. we experience, our experience has taught us that's right and wrong, per se. So that's not something that Nicole and I have been talking about and discussing. So it's really that's very, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, again, it comes down to submitting to him. And again, you don't have to. You don't have to submit to him. You have the option. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's consequences for right and for this and for that. So no matter what you choose, there's going to be consequences. Because again, either way, <laughs> It's not always a joyous uh, revelation. Yeah, yeah. Harvey, speaking of that, uh, speaking of God hardening Pharaoh's heart, um, <clears throat> how it reminds me of uh, Romans chapter 1, that he uh, gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. Um, that, that there was a point where they just, they knew what was right, <clears throat> and they rejected it, and God gave them over to that mindset. Yeah. And I think it's the same way with God hardening Pharaoh's heart during the plagues. Pharaoh has mind made up, and after a certain point, God gave him over to that, and that took, a, and that took over his whole, his whole personality. So I think the danger in not submitting to God is, um, after a while, God's 
that's going to say, okay, this is what you want to do, and this is what you're going to do. And at that point, that hardening takes us over. Yeah. Which Israel, he called the stiff neck people, right? Because what they do. He's like, you don't want the law. Yeah, no, we do. No, 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 trust me, you don't. You know what I mean? Go back and tell them again. Yeah. You know? And they said, no, we, just tell us what to do. So. And they did get, it by choice. Yeah, and then they you know, the point he tried where they, to. Yeah, we want a king, and he's like, you don't need a king. Like, yeah. we want a king, and then we'll Probably follow. Promise you don't want one. <laughs> he's like, you don't want one. And they're like, yes, you do. He's like, all right, here's a king. Right. <laughs> right. And we'll remember. Yeah. And so again, he he gives us the desires of our hearts. Again, sometimes the goal is though to have his desires as our. Will That's it. Amen. And Amen. so, because he will give you away get to your desires, but then you're stuck with what you wanted. <laughs> it's like, and this leaves an empty void in you, right. whereas when you want what he wants, it fills that void. You don't get that emptiness that you feel. Amen. Otherwise, by again, do it your own. Because again, he gives you what you want. <laughs> so the trick is to get to where you're thinking and wanting what he wants. Well, I think that's the end. That's the end of Revelation for today. Um, so next, next time we'll go into seventh. I think we're on the sixth, right? We're on the sixth. From the scripture I was referencing earlier. Yeah. It's Exodus 15, 22 to 26. It's the Lord provides water. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which is, you know, prophetic of the cross. And he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. And then it goes into how they made an altar and stuff. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. The water becoming bitter, and how the blood of Jesus, because right before it had that whole blood reference. You yeah. know, like, the blood was thrown. It's like, well, what blood was it? You know? Yeah, because up to that point, too, the, I try and remind my memory in Revelation, the point, the only blood mentioned is the uh, lamb. That was slain right. kind of, yes. uh, up to that point in Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I mean, people died. Mercy. But yeah. That's been on earth and he's like, it's from heaven. So. Interesting. Uh, one other interesting thing, which I want to point out real quick, too, is that um, it says that you know the altar before the throne, which again, I think goes back to kind of the tabernacle before the throne of God, uh, the throne room, you know, and that. So it also, again, I feel sometimes with the descriptions when it says it's before the throne, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's literally right in front of it, per se. Because everything technically is before the throne. Right. Because, again, he's the highest, the top point. Right, right. Um, and so, again, <laughs> I think of Con Air. You ever watched Con Air? And they have a point where he draws the map in the sand or whatever. And he's like, all right, this is the plane. This is this is that. He's like, well, what, what's that rock? He's like, this is a rock. <laughs> And he throws yeah. it like, sometimes a rock is just a rock. Sometimes numbers are just numbers. But other times they do have extra meanings to them. So that's again something to remember when we go through relations. Sometimes a locust is a locust or a horse is a horse. But other times they are much more. They breed it. So, yeah, and then they come a lot of bread with lions and yeah, they breed fire. Uh, but yeah, so that's just something I personally try to remember as I'm going through the relations. Um, so again, we'll continue on with this uh, next time, and I'll close this in prayer, and we'll be about our day. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have given us this book of Revelations, that from it, Lord, we will be blessed. And we just take the time to dig deeper into it, to listen to it, and follow you, Lord, and where you lead us and guide us in it. We thank you again, Lord, for your Son that brings us salvation through him, we have been saved. We just give all of our sins, Lord, to you. We give our hearts, make our hearts like yours, Lord. Make us want what you want. Because, Lord, we submit to you. We submit our rights and wrongs to follow your rights and wrongs, Lord. To do what you want us to do. To be the best version of ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When you're reading this, it really makes the blood that much more valuable. Like, oof, we have really missed the bullet on this one. Like, that would be, because there's a judgment. Mm -hmm. and it's very clear with God. There's always a judgment for sin. And this is it. But the blood. Speak the soul. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah.